UPS Flight 2976, an MD-11 cargo jet, suffered a catastrophic engine separation during takeoff in Louisville, killing all nine crew members. The NTSB is still investigating, and new details from their latest briefing are shedding light on what happened in those critical seconds. Today, we'll break down the technical findings, historical context, and what investigators are watching. Let's dive in. Let's start with the NTSB's latest on-the-ground work. They've confirmed something chilling. The left engine separated from the wing during takeoff, and the bulk of the pylon, that's the structure that attaches the engine to the wing, was still physically attached to the engine when it came off. That detail is critical because it focuses the investigation on the attachment points and the structural integrity of that area. The scale of the investigation is massive. Over 500 people are involved, including first responders, NTSB investigators, and technical experts. They're combing the debris field with heavy equipment, laser scanning topography, and even metal detectors to recover every piece of evidence. These measures aren't just for show. In aviation crash investigations, the way debris spreads can reveal exactly where and how the structural failure began. Then there's the cockpit voice recorder, or CVR. Investigators report that about 37 seconds after the crew advanced to take off thrust, a repeating bell sounded, persistent, until the recording ended 25 seconds later with the final impact. That's all we know for now, but it tells us the crew had a very short window to react, and they did what they could to try to control the aircraft in an impossible situation. Even now, the debris field isn't completely safe. Spot fires are still popping up from smoldering cargo, and investigators are working closely with first responders to secure the scene without disturbing perishable evidence. That's a key point. Everything from the pylon fragments to tiny bolts could provide a clue, so the NTSB is taking its time. The final report, which could take months, will put all these pieces together. Now, to understand why investigators are zeroing in on the engine and pylon, let's talk about the aircraft itself. The MD-11F is essentially an advanced derivative of the DC-10 Tri-J. It's got bigger wings, reinforced engine pylons, and modern avionics, all designed to handle the stresses of long-haul cargo flights. In numbers, we're talking about a 206-foot wingspan, a maximum takeoff weight of roughly 650,000 pounds, and three CF-680C2 engines capable of hauling hundreds of tons of freight across oceans. That's a serious piece of machinery. The UPS MD-11 fleet is typically around 30 years old, which is normal for cargo operators. But here's the catch. Long-haul operations rack up thousands of flight cycles, and this aircraft likely exceeded 75,000. Each takeoff, landing, and climb puts tiny stresses on the wings, pylons, and engine mounts. Over time, even the strongest structures can develop fatigue, which is why investigators are paying such close attention to the left pylon and its attachment points. It's worth noting that the MD-11 has an impressive reliability record, over 10 million flight hours with more than 99% dispatch reliability. Engine or pylon separation events are exceptionally rare, but rare doesn't mean impossible, and in this case, every angle of potential structural weakness is being scrutinized. Which brings us to the heart of the investigation. How could the engine actually separate? The NTSB is examining multiple mechanical and structural failure possibilities, and I'll break down the main ones. First, fatigue cracks in the pylon fittings. Every takeoff and landing creates tiny stress cycles in the metal. Over thousands of cycles, these micro cracks can grow without showing up in routine inspections. Second, corrosion or loosened shear bolts. The bolts and mounting lugs that hold the engine to the wing are designed to handle enormous loads, but if a bolt corrodes or loses torque, the load tolerance drops, and that can turn a normal takeoff into a disaster. Third, resonance-induced vibrations. Basically, under certain conditions, the engine and pylon can vibrate at a frequency that amplifies stress in the metal. Think of pushing a swing at the right rhythm. Eventually, something snaps. 
Finally, undetected microcracks or oversights from previous heavy maintenance checks. These are the detailed inspections every cargo plane goes through periodically. If a tiny flaw slipped through, it could propagate to a critical failure. Investigators are running metallurgical testing on the pylon and engine components to determine where any cracks started, how fast they spread, and if there were material anomalies. It's all highly technical, but the takeaway is that these are just early hypotheses. Nothing is confirmed. The NTSB is methodically verifying each one before drawing any conclusions. To fully grasp the potential severity of an engine separation on takeoff, let's revisit aviation history. American Airlines Flight 191, a DC-10, experienced an engine separation from the left wing during takeoff back in 1979. The results were instantaneous and catastrophic. The left wing lost lift, the aircraft rolled violently, and it crashed almost immediately after leaving the ground. What caused AA-1-9-1 was traced back to maintenance practices. Mechanics had used forklifts improperly to remove the engine pylon assembly, which inflicted microscopic cracks and structural damage to the pylon mounts. Once the plane was airborne, these hidden weaknesses led to hydraulic failure and slat retraction on the left wing, triggering a roll the pilots could not recover from. Now fast forward to the MD-11, a modern derivative of the DC-10. Engineers learned from AA-191. The MD-11's pylons are reinforced with titanium, fittings to resist fatigue. The hydraulic systems are triple redundant, meaning three independent systems, at 3,000 PSI each to ensure backup if one fails, and there's automatic slat asymmetry detection, which warns if one-wing slats retract improperly. Elastomeric dampers were added to absorb torsional vibration, which reduces stress from engine thrust and airflow. Here's the key point for our analysis. These upgrades make a structural failure like AA-1-9-1 exceedingly unlikely, but not impossible. The current MD-11 had been flying for decades and logged tens of thousands of cycles, so investigators are examining whether aging, fatigue, or unique stress conditions could create vulnerabilities that even modern engineering can't fully prevent. Historical parallels help us understand what investigators are watching but they don't imply this crash shares the same cause. Turning to maintenance, it's important to remember that UPS operates one of the most meticulously managed MD-11 fleets in the world. Flight 2-9-7-6 was reportedly airworthy with no unresolved discrepancies. It had undergone a recent heavy maintenance check in San Antonio a comprehensive inspection where engines, pylons, hydraulic systems, and structural attachments are thoroughly examined. Investigators are currently retrieving detailed records to confirm exactly what was done during that check. Modern maintenance doesn't just rely on scheduled checks. UPS uses AI-assisted tracking, which monitors components for stress accumulation over time, and predictive analytics that flag potential structural concerns before they become critical. Drone thermography allows engineers to detect subtle heat anomalies in engines or pylon mounts that might indicate friction or microfractures. Non-destructive testing techniques, ultrasonic scans, x-rays, and infrared thermography can detect internal flaws without disassembling the structure. One central question for the NTSB is whether these current maintenance intervals are sufficient for an aircraft with decades of service. Even without previous discrepancies, the combination of high flight cycles and repeated heavy takeoffs can contribute to fatigue and wear in critical metal composite interfaces, particularly in high stress areas like engine pylons. Again, we're not drawing conclusions, just highlighting what investigators are considering. Aging aircraft can remain incredibly safe when maintained rigorously, but understanding whether incremental wear or unseen material fatigue contributed to the engine separation is a key piece of the puzzle. So, what's the NTSB focusing on now? The investigation is highly methodical, targeting several technical fronts. First, the pylon attach fittings and engine mount fasteners are being analyzed in extreme detail. Metallurgical labs are using high-resolution techniques like scanning electron microscopy to trace any cracks back to their origin, determine propagation rates, and identify potential material anomalies. 
This could reveal whether a flaw developed over decades or was introduced during maintenance. Investigators are also cross-referencing CVR and FDR data, the cockpit voice and flight data recordings. By correlating alarms, crew inputs, and engine parameters, they can reconstruct the sequence of events down to fractions of a second. The persistent bell alarm heard about 37 seconds after takeoff thrust is a critical clue. While we don't yet know the exact meaning, it signals that the crew recognized something was wrong and tried to respond in real time. Additionally, the team is comparing the damaged MD-11 to a live identical aircraft in the UPS fleet. This allows inspectors to see how an undamaged engine pylon setup should behave, providing a benchmark for understanding any abnormal stress or failure modes. Simulator tests are being conducted to explore crew responses to engine separation and system alerts, essentially testing human factors alongside mechanical analysis. On the ground, debris mapping continues, but with extreme caution. Investigators must safely handle compressed bottles, fuel suppression systems, and other hazardous materials to avoid disturbing perishable evidence. Laser scans and metal detectors are helping to reconstruct the debris field with millimeter level precision so that every fragment can be analyzed in context. The overarching message, this is early stage analysis. The NTSB has not released a final cause and all observations remain preliminary. However, the ongoing scrutiny could influence future MD-11 maintenance protocols, inspection schedules for aging aircraft, and broader safety improvements across cargo fleets. Every piece of evidence recovered has the potential to shape recommendations that prevent a tragedy like this from happening again. Closing line for this section, stay tuned, as the investigation unfolds over the coming months, we'll continue breaking down what the NTSB finds and what it could mean for the aircraft you see flying heavy cargo around the globe.